Hi, I'm Kendra Wheeler. I'm here at Eastman in Pomona, California with the Rue St. George 850 alto saxophone. So I don't come from a musical family. No one in my family plays an instrument. However, my parents did listen to and do listen to a lot of music. I remember our basement full of uh, stacks and stacks and stacks and bags and bags and bags full of CDs. Mostly smooth jazz, but some blues, some gospel, R&B, soul, funk in there as well. And so Saturdays and weekends and throughout the week, music was just playing in the household all the time. I would say the hardest time in my career so far has actually been during my graduate degree, my doctorate degree, as this was a time where I was coming into my own, that I was starting to shape my professional appearance and musical appearance and you know what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. But the hardest thing for me has been being a black woman in a field that is predominantly white. I didn't have a lot of representation of people that looked like me doing the things that I wanted to do. And that was really hard. I had no affirmation of my existence. So I started to question my purpose. What was I doing? Why was I getting this degree? How successful could I possibly be when there are no other representations of, of people that look like me that are successful and want to do what I want to do? I would say imposter syndrome is certainly real. I felt it on the teaching side when I first started teaching in higher education, but I still feel it on the playing side as well. Being a black woman in the field, I do feel like I have this extra added pressure on me sometimes as a player to be more than just the best or to be the most technical, the most musical, just to overdo it. And that is a lot of pressure because at times I feel like I'm not enough, that I can't hang, so to speak, with some of my peers and colleagues who are doing wonderful things in the field that I admire greatly. However, I sought out other mentorship, other guidance, readings, other ways in which to affirm my existence that it is okay to be a black woman in a field that is predominantly white. It's okay to be a black woman classical saxophonist, that I shouldn't feel guilty for being in the field, and that my place and my purpose is to be here in fact and to hopefully increase the representation, be more visible so that other maybe black women, classical saxophonists who are growing up and coming through the school system can see someone that looks like them. Representation really does matter. I love a lot of things about this horn, but one of the first things is the key work, which features the DS mechanism, which is really light. It offers a lot of stability and precision for me as a player when I am doing all sorts of crazy things on the horn. I also love the lightness of this horn. I used to play in a horn that was much heavier and I did not realize until I had the Rue St. George in my hand how much of a lighter horn that I need. I feel like I can project and do all the great things that I need to do on the horn. I love the sound of the 850 Rue St. George. I feel like I can capture uniquely my voice in the ways in which I want to. I can go from bright to dark. I can do all of the things that I need to do tonally. It is light, it is comfortable, and it makes me feel secure as a player.